Hello and welcome to the Sligo Show with myself, Brendan Tierney. This week we're joined by a very special guest all the way from Grange. We have Eddie O'Gorman, who's the chairperson of the Spanish Armada Ireland, which, as I said, is based just out the road in Grange. And Eddie, you have your big annual festival back and back with the public again, so you must be very excited. Tell us a little bit more. When is it on again? What's the We're, we're on the weekend after next, the 16th to the 18th of September. Sligo's Spanish Armada Festival. Yeah, watch for you'll the posters. See, you'll see posters all over town. Uh, a combination of music, uh, culture, lectures, uh, walks, uh, runs, okay. and uh, a full programme of events. Okay. And we're delighted to be back in a physical sense. I can well imagine, like many people. So for anyone, the uneducated, who may not understand the whole history of it, can you give us a bit of a gist of where this all came about and what happened back all those years ago? Okay, so the Spanish Armada was sent out by Philip II of Spain to overthrow Elizabeth I of England. Mm. Uh, a fleet of 130 ships carrying 30,000 men. Uh, they made their way up the channel, beset by storms all the way. Uh, a bit of skirmishing, nothing major, uh, but they found themselves in a situation where they could only beat up the east coast of England, round Scotland and Ireland to get back to Spain to try again the following year. So, uh, as I say, they were beset by storms, particularly when they hit Scotland and started coming over the, to the Irish uh, coastline. And uh, three of the ships uh, in company uh, separated from the main fleet, uh, La Lavia, La Juliana and Santa Maria de Vison. And they ended up on the north coast just travelling over and back, waiting for a wind to take them out into the Atlantic. They were caught in a huge hurricane and driven onto the beach and uh, all three ships were, in a matter of hours, were destroyed. Over a thousand men died. Right. So what we're doing in Spanish Armada Ireland is commemorating the tragic loss of life but also to celebrate the cultures of Spain and, and yeah. Ireland. Yeah, okay. And I think, is there a bit of a link to, if you ever see a, a dark-haired, uh, l- lovely, sallow-skinned man in Ireland, it could be a bit of a link to this whole history, is there? Well, those connections between Spain and <laughs> Ireland go way back. Everybody thinks they have, uh, if they have dark skin yeah, yeah. and flashing brown eyes that they're from the Well, they'll use that in the nightclub <laughs> chatting up anyway, sure. That's if it right. works, it works, you know? That's right. But no, it, the links between Spain and Ireland go back to it. Prehistory. Way beyond. Yeah. Okay, okay, very good. So you're the chairperson, and it's a whole voluntary committee out there. And, and ha- I mean, what year? How many years are you in existence? You know what I mean. This whole grouping. We well, the the original group, Grange mm. and Development Association, goes back to the uh, quad centenary, the 400th anniversary of the oh, yes. uh, records. Uh, so that was in 1988, of course, and uh, that committee did some very valuable work. They uh, they started a, a monument, this monument overlooking the beach, commemorating the, uh, the tragedy. They produced a booklet, which we're still using today, okay. the Spanish Armada 1588, um, a wonderful production. And uh, we started again um, in 2011. So this is our 12th year. Okay. And uh, yeah, we rebranded as Spanish Armada Ireland because people were thinking Grange and Armada Development Association was there an Armada for Grange, so we thought it would make okay, it simple. Okay, yeah. And we want to be known as the uh, as the centre for Armada studies for the uh, the okay. country. So make it more international, as such, which it is for yeah. the island of Ireland, you know, yeah, because yeah. there is heritage. Uh, there's Armada heritage all the way from the Causeway Coast right down to Kerry. Twenty six ships that we know of in total were lost. Uh, in that series of That's storms. something called Spanish Point, is that right? Spanish That's Point is named, yes, is okay. that uh, has a connection there. Yeah, they, they had, a, they had a, a ship went down there. They've been looking for it for quite some time now. I don't think they're ever going to find it because there's pretty dynamic water down there and I'd okay. say they're well gone. That's the extraordinary thing about the street wrecks uh, because they have been largely untouched for 430 plus years and uh, there is no Armada site like it in the world. Mm-hmm. where you have three Armada ships very close to the, the uh, coastline uh, that have been largely untouched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, that's the thing, when someone comes even apart all year round, just regarding your festival itself, where would you tell visitors, this is where you go, this is where you see this? Because I mean, I'm living in Sligo over 20 years and I've actually never seen the wreck myself, you know, to my shame. But I'm like the person you need to say, <laughs> where do we go? What's the best thing to go well, and see well, you, you want to get more? You won't see a wreck. Okay. Um, the, wrecks, the wrecks are covered by a bird in the sand. Perfectly yes. preserved. No, there the, 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 the wouldn't be because the, wreck, the wrecks were wrecked yeah, yeah. Uh, back in September 1588. All you'd find now underneath the sand is a, a, a debris. Right, okay. Timbers and a, a, an awful lot of cannon. And there's bound to be uh, artifacts of great value, 
uh, down in the, the bowels of the ship. Mm. But because they haven't been excavated, we don't know. Okay. Uh, if you look at the recoveries from the Girona, uh, which went down off the Causeway coast, uh, and the Trinidad de uh, Valencera, which went down off Donegal, both are on, in, uh, on display, one in the Belfast Museum and one in the uh, Derry Museum, the Tower. The quality of the uh, artefacts that came off there were extraordinary. Golden pieces, beautiful jewellery, etc. And I've no doubt that there are artefacts of that quality okay. uh, lying. Is there plans it. or is it impossible to get down there? No, no, no. The, 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 um, the thinking in archaeology now is if the wrecks are not being disturbed, leave them in situ because they're perfectly preserved yes. under the water and under the burden of sand. Okay, okay. So unless we get, as we have been getting, huge and uh, violent storms on our coastline. Oh, when, if, well, if the wreck's uncovered, yeah. and that's what happened in 2015. And that was my next thing. Tell us a little bit about, you had a, a discovery, a significant discovery to 2015? Very significant. Now, back in the mid-80s, a group of English divers came in and they did bring up some artefacts, um, and, uh, but the government came in and said, no more work can, can happen on the site until such time as we've uh, reviewed the law on recoveries from wreck sites in Ireland. And in fact, the street, you read the legislation that arose out of the case that was taken by the English divers against the state, uh, dictates the policy with regard to uh, the ownership of wrecks in Irish water. Oh, okay, so that changed everything. That changed everything. Okay. So in 2014 and 15, uh, we've had a lot of disturbances on the site. And uh, 2015 in particular, we called, we, huge timbers started coming ashore. So we knew something was happening on one or more of the sites. We called in the Underwater Archaeology Unit, which are part of the National Monument Service, and who are great friends of ours. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they surveyed it, uh, put together a recovery plan, and we recovered, well, we didn't, they recovered yeah. uh, nine cannon, put along with the three cannon that was recovered back in the mid-80s, and other artefacts like a, a copper cylinder, uh, a carriage, a siege carriage wheel, extraordinary stuff. They're, all, they're in conservation in... Uh, in uh, Dublin, the National Museum. I was going to say, where can we see them? So they're, uh, they're you can all... see them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't? Because you can't see them because they're in conservation. Oh, sorry, okay. But the, the plans are that we will uh, develop a facility in Sligo where you can uh, to, hound, to house the, the, the some or all Brilliant. of the cannons. But there's a, there is over 70 cannons still to be recovered from the site. And it's not the cannon. It's not about the cannon. Yeah. The cannon are just one part because they're big and they're... Uh, weighty mm. and they're very obvious. It's the small stuff. If you go to the exhibitions in Derry or in Belfast, it's the small uh, personal uh, articles yeah. that, that tell us more about the lives of the people Absolutely. at the time. Very good. And I mean, what kind of visitors numbers do you get every year to this in approximately? Like, I think it's a huge asset for the area. And like, are you getting enough government support? Do you think there should be more made of this? Should become a bigger tourist asset? What's your kind of Hopes, plans, what's your frustrations? Well, the, the attraction of the site is that it's all year round. Yes. We have a, um, what we call it an interpretive centre. It's a, a visitor attraction now uh, in a small courthouse building in the, um, in the mid middle of Grange. Yeah. Beautiful little building, but very, very confined in, in space. Uh, if you put one cannon in there to <laughs> go from one wall to the other, so it's just not going to work. But we have a feasibility study in progress, which will be reporting in a month or so, and that will tell us how to advance the project into a much bigger visitor. Oh, brilliant. So there's big plans ahead. There are, well, we will have to wait for them to okay. report. Uh, these are people, experts in, in, in the field of, of uh, museums and display. So we'll take their advice and go from there. But it's a big project for a small community. So yeah. we very much need the support, as we have gotten to date from Sligo County Council, from the Department of Heritage. Uh, now, the, the, when I said the Department of Heritage, it's art, heritage, culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's getting, it's getting <laughs> added let, on. Let's call, it, let's call it heritage. Uh, they have been very good to us. Um, anything we've asked for, basically we've gotten. We uh, renovated, we made the, bu the building safe. It was falling into disrepair. We spent a lot of money on that, but we uh, recovered that through grants. Uh, we, in 2019, uh, we completed a film. Um, with many local uh, heroes. <laughs> <Extras>. <laughs> you wouldn't know who you'd see in that. You'd never know who you'd see in that. 25 minutes, and it tells the story of Francisco de Cuellar, okay. who was the most famous survivor of the Stregia Rex, 
and wrote a brilliant, thrilling, uh, exhilarating, swashbuckling account of his time in. in oh right, I didn't know he actually. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. so I'm totally ignorant to novel like this. So that's interesting. That's why I wanted to ask. Well, tell the, us a well bit there more you go. The, in people. this little booklet, there's, a, trans, a, okay. there's a translation of, of, of his. And, uh, and that little featurette is available uh, online as well, I presume, or through your website. The little docudrama that you shot. The docudrama is available for download on our website. Okay, yeah. so if anyone's kind of gone modern day, give me a little video, give me a gist of it, then I'll come and see, so they can see all that on your website. And what's the website again? www.spanisharmadaireland.com Very simple. Very good. Um, so moving back on to this big weekend you have coming up, the 16th to the 18th, I'm reading your poster here. Yes. So just give us a little brief day by day and is it family friendly, is it free? You know, I know you said there's music involved and athletics and everything, so... We have a combination of free and, and uh, uh, paid events. Okay. The, um, the centrepiece is the commemoration on the Saturday, 3 o'clock, when we commemorate the loss of life on street, the Spanish ambassador will come down, uh, His Excellency uh, Senor Castro, and some people from the embassy. I'm sure we'll have lots of visitors from Spain. Mm -hmm. um, the council will be obviously um, represented, as will the department. So uh, that's the centre event, uh, and that's the most important yeah. thing. But we have a series of lectures on very interesting um, subjects. For example, we were recently gifted a, an original 16th century chart by Ortelius, beautifully coloured, of Ireland. Yeah. So this is the sort of wow. thing that people would have been carrying uh, back in the day. And uh, that's on display in the centre, but we're uh, having an official hand, handing over that was given to us from an estate in the US. We have very generous benefactors in Spain. And that's how we, we have the number of, of, of original and replica art, artifacts on display in the centre uh, from uh, through the generosity of, of people in Spain. We have original coins of the era, we have original daggers, we have um, and we have replicas of armour and clothing, etc. Very good. And that's the main event on the Saturday. But then sorry, I know there's sorry. a whole yes. festival of music and fun as well. And there an eight are. an eight K as well. And an eight Does that K. take you along a trail of where you <laughs> see along the coast? Or? Yes, it does. Okay. It, takes, it takes you on the Queller Trail or the Dequayar Trail, if you were to give it the correct yes, pronunciation. Okay. Uh, a part of it from uh, the beach and street to, to Stod Abbey and back to the, the village. But it's very, very scenic. The whole area is very mm, scenic. Of course, yeah, yeah. You've got uh, Ben Bulber in the background of the sea in front. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's very much a part of our, our uh, offering. The, uh, we're having a Cayley Moor with members of the Dartree Kim. We were hoping that oh. we get the Spaniards in to teach them a little bit of Irish culture. Yeah. And uh, Philippe Carbonell is yeah. uh, doing a, a, a concert on the Friday night. Uh, the concerts are, are a nominal fee, I think it's 12, 12 euros, okay. uh, but the majority of uh, events like the Armada Club's late at night, the walks... Uh, I like the late at night part now, what's involved there? All, all Where's that free. part? Well, the, <laughs> if you know the hostelries <laughs> in Grange, we have uh, Langs. Oh yes, uh, of course. So they'll be hosting yes. a club one night and Morns up the road. Morons, okay. And there'll be music and crack and chat and all Very that. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, it sounds like firstly an amazing piece of history. If people just want to go out any time of the year and learn more. Is the visitor centre open certain times the of visitor, the year? Or? Yeah, they we're dependent on, on, up until very recently, we've been dependent on volunteers. And that was very badly impacted by uh, COVID. Of course, yeah. Because uh, the, the cohort that we were relying on were mostly older people who mm -hmm. had to mind themselves. So, but we've recently in receipt of, of the, the services of a tooth worker and we're training them up now, but we have been using a volunteer roster, so wow. we're just opening on Saturdays and Sundays and bank holidays, two to six. Two to six, okay. You asked me about numbers. Uh, the festival has attracted upwards of 5,000 wow. over the, yeah, each year, but uh, we don't know how it's going to turn out this year. Because, <laughs> Who knows anything anymore? Well, yeah, well indeed, 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 we'll have to wait and see. Very but uh, as I say, it's an all round year attraction. So, you are you know, if you come to the, the visitor center, that's, explains what the, the what the area holds yes. with regard to Ar Armada heritage and because if you go to the beach in Strija it's a beautiful place Absolutely. but you won't you see any find. wrecks okay okay, okay so yeah. but we explain what's out there we have uh, very nice panels uh, explaining exactly where, where the ships it? are okay. and uh, what's been recovered from them and uh, where they are at the moment and what we plan for the future very good very good well look I said well done to all your voluntary committee and uh, Anyone that wants to find out more, it's SpanishArmadaIreland.com. That will 
get us yet. You'll find oh, out all the details there. <laughs> well, Eddie, thanks so much for coming in to talk to us, and hopefully we'll get out for one of those days, especially that late night session. Sounds like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome anytime. <laughs> hopefully, You're welcome hopefully. Anytime, Brett. So thanks again to Eddie there from the Spanish Armada Ireland group out in Grange, and their festival is on on the 16th to the 19th of September. So 16th to 18th September. I knew I get one bit wrong. Uh, so go and check it out, and check out the website SpanishArmadaIreland.com. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. So if you liked what you just seen, don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel here. We've loads of great interviews from a load of really interesting people over the series. And if you're on social media, which I'm sure loads of you are, we are on Instagram and Facebook. So give us a follow there.